of the scene at the ASCRS meeting in Boston. It's going to be on there, baby. I hope we can keep this as informal as possible. We'll have talks, but if you have questions, by all means, uh, jump up, grab the mic, and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. So without any further ado, let's get started with uh, Dr. Salt's results of weight front guided LASIK in 10 eyes with pupils larger than 8.5 millimeters. This will be a great one because uh, a lot of people out there in the anti-LASIK world want to see if this doesn't work. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, I have heard respected refractive surgeons say that because of the studies, show that large pupils are not predictive of nighttime vision problems, that we no longer have to measure the pupils. And I'm here to convince you that that's not true and that you shouldn't really consider doing that. When George and I did the RK study, the PERC study, we didn't even pay any attention to pupil size. And why? Because we told all of them they're going to have nighttime halos and glare because they're going to have incisions into a three millimeter optical zone. My conflict of interest is with outcome. So here's a four of these patients, four of the five, that were in my refracting lane, and I looked at these pupils and I said, why did we dilate you? And they said, I haven't had any problems. Bigger than eight and a half. In fact, uh, eight of the 10 were bigger than nine. I've done refractive surgery for a long time, and I haven't seen that many patients with pupils bigger than nine millimeters. A physician's manual, and this is the one from this accident, it says night glare and halos and ghosting may be seen. Some patients may have pupils bigger than nine, and analyze the pupil and be careful. The outcome one also has a similar kind of warning. And she was miserable. She had her pupil was mismeasured. She found out it was bigger than seven and a half millimeters and she was having to use Alcon. And she's complaining about the difficulties she's had. So what I think you have to do in these patients is really spend a lot of time telling them that they have pupils that are unusually large, that they're quite likely to have an increase in their nighttime glare and halos if you do it. So we did that and told them we're going to do one eye at a time, and if they're happy with the first eye, we can go ahead and do the second eye. And I told them all they may need eye drops like alpha again to control the symptoms. So this is what we did. One had a Visex, one had an Alcon laser vision, and three had uh, the Allegretto. So this is their pupil sizes. The refractions were only from minus one and a quarter to minus four and a half spherical equivalents. And I'm giving you the total higher order aberrations pre-op and the spherical aberrations pre-op. So they had a mean total HOA of 0.93, a mean spherical of 0.35, and a mean coma of 0.43. This is the post-op data. All of these patients had good vision. They were 2015 to 2020, eight of the 10, in fact, were 2015. The refractions were fine. And here are the scores. Now, the total higher order aberrations, you see, we went from 0.93 to 1.98. We doubled it. The spherical, one of the things that's a little bit misleading is a lot of the wavefront machines don't measure them if the pupils are real large. Like the uh, Allegretto system only takes a, a pupil up to seven. Same with the Visex. If you look at what the aperture of, of with the uh, Alcon later wave, the true aperture is 8.8. .8. If you measure it at seven, it says sphere collaboration is 0.48, when it's actually 1.15 when you have the true If you can go from A to a, a, an E. This is their scores. Uh, Preoperatively, they were all A or B. And postoperatively, they were all above B, a couple of them were D even. So in other words, they did notice an increase in their nighttime glare. And if you do a concentral light reflex on them, put a light in them while you look at this test, the, symptom, the uh, scores went down to a normal reading. And that's why they adjusted to it. Some of them used alpha gun temporarily, but they quit. And now they're all happy. So you can do these patients, but I, my warning to you is just be careful with them. Keep measuring pupil size. And above all, give them a long and detailed informed consent. Thank you very much.